The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 3rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out, th out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. That's right, not to us. So all we need to do, boy, I've totally had a brain fart out there. I looked, I looked off to the side, and uh, so I got this kind of, you know, memorized, if you will, but a total brain fart out there. So we'll just simply uh, skip past that, and uh, and we'll just simply say first, happy Fourth of July, early Fourth of July for traveling out there. Be safe, as you know, the markets are closed today at one o'clock, and again tomorrow. But we'll be back with you on a Friday morning out there. I would love to hear from you. So I realize a lot of people are traveling. You know, we're going to probably have some light volume in the market, maybe light volume with regard to calls and requests out there. But I would love to hear from you if you're listening in. And just simply, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If, uh, if you have a question but you can't call in, I've got your back. And what you do there is you go ahead and send me an email. And you send that off to Steve at TFN.com. You send it off early. And in the subject, if you're kind enough to put radio show question, you would not believe how much junk I get. And so that's the easiest way for me to identify your request out there. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So we're starting our day, unfortunately, with a uh, mixed bag out there. And the mix is really coming from the Dow, which is trading down 60. We have sectors inside the S&P 500. They're also trading the downside. For example, the healthcare sector is off a buck fifty. Financials are off a nickel. The uh, uh, communications sector off seven pennies out there. But the Dow down 65. S&P is up 10. Nasdaq up 75. Russell's up four. Semi 65. Tranny's 81. We've got gold trading up 40 bucks, 1.7 percent there. Silver's up a buck 18. That's a four percent move. Lights recruit is flat up a nickel. Trade out 82.85. Natural gas is up two cents at 246 and the 30 treasury is up a dollar the dollar one point and 11 ticks trade out 118 even steven now if we take a look at our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside it's going to be broadcom a three percent move that's 52 bucks as mill holdings 1.6 percent 17 bucks bank of montreal 15 bucks three percent tesla 12 uh 1250 that's a five percent move there and united rentals up 750 a little over one percent our shakers to the downside micro strategy uh, 41 bucks or three percent regenerate down 29 bucks or three percent eli lily 20 bucks two percent mercado rebase off eight bucks a half a percent humana's down 10 bucks that's a 2.7 percent move so we do have movers and shakers of course what i want to do is look at what you want to look at where do we want to begin our day well the first place we be we be we have been beginning our day by take a look at new york stock exchange advanced client oscillator it's a cool indicator it's really measuring the difference between the 19 to 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line panel number two on the screen here that you're looking at is the advanced decline line. We can see that we got basically back up to a new all-time high back here in uh, May. But uh, if we take a look at the uh, the difference between that 19 and 39 period exponents moving average, right now the reading is above zero. It's the first time we've seen that. Quite frankly, we haven't been above zero until uh, since May 21st out there. When you're below zero, and certainly when you close below it two, two days in a row, it's telling us that sellers are the ones that have control. Now, you could have fooled, fooled most of us out there because we haven't seen a whole lot of control by the sellers out there. Now, what we need to see today is not just a close above that zero threshold level, but what you need to see also is a second close above that, and that would be looking at a Friday out there. If you do that, then you have a signal that says with regard to this uh, tool that the uh, buyers are the ones in control. That would match up with regard to the spot volatilities, which is trading below its 50 50-day exponential moving average. It's trading right now at 12.09. The 50 days at 13.08. So 
things are somewhat set up for the bullish condition out there. But what we want to do is go take what's going on inside the um, – let's do this. Instead of – we can always go back to the equity futures, and I'm sure that we'll be taking a look at those during the day. But why don't we do something just a little bit different out there, a little bit of variety. Otherwise, the show would get kind of boring out there. And let's go take a look at the cash indices. Let's go see what the daily cash indices are telling us right now. So let's begin with the Dow in the upper left-hand so, uh, left corner. Here's what we know about the Dow, and that's this, that right now price continues to stay above that green oscillator and change line. When a oscillator and change line is green, it tells us that the price oscillator is above zero. That is a, 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 bullish, con that's a, that's a bullish condition. But when we have price above the green oscillator and change line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero, and that is a very bullish condition out there. And when price pulls back, and this is a very cool tool, I know Basil likes to use the 9 and the, I think it's the 14 period exponential moving average out there. That's a cool tool. This is another cool tool out there. This tool was built specifically because I never knew, maybe you did, but I never really knew, was a pullback just a pullback to support? Or was it something more? And what this line will tell you, if it's green out there, is pulling back and testing and rejecting that level, that was a support area. That was a buy level out there. Now, when we take a look at the Dow Jones, continue to look at it, it really isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. In other words, what it has to do, it needs to close. So it has to sell the D point pattern out there. It looks, it looks like it does. Let me just see out here on the cash in to see. Let's go ahead and uh, we've got some time, I'm sure. So there's your A to B point. Steve, we'll just move that over to that hammer candle that created the C point. And sure enough, there's that one to one A to B equals CD. So you're going to sell the D point pattern inside the Dow Jones industrials out there. In order to negate that signal, you're going to need to see a close above the high from June 24th. And that high is 39.571. 39.571.23 to be exact out there. So at this stage, even though we've got a nice rally, although the Dow is one that's pulling back out there, uh, what we've got is um, is a sell the D point that price would need to take out. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the level here to be watching is going to be 5523.64 at day's end. If price closes above that, let me just open up the chart out there. If price closes above that, it will negate this Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, likely another signal will will get triggered, but uh, just just because a signal's triggered doesn't mean that's a top. You need that confirmation and that's the cavalry and that's why we take the bullish or bearish reversal candles out there but closing above 55 23 64 will put the s p 500 into full out breakout mode you may remember yesterday we took a look at the dow the s p uh and we took a look at the uh, uh the uh, seasonal patterns that are out there we took a look at the which are bullish uh, the, just the traditional seasonal pattern is bullish through the middle of July. If we take a look at a presidential cycle, which we happen to be in, then we're bullish through about the uh, early part of September out there. Uh, so the uh, NDX 100 right now is negating its TD9 count top. I don't think the NQ is, but the NASDAQ 100 cash indice is. And a close today above 20, 0, 71 will negate that signal. So you can see a new one has formed out there. A new signal has been triggered out there uh, and that just says okay we're continuing to move higher we're doing less relative energy out there that's not a top it's only a top when you get confirmation out there so a close above 20 0, 017 0.71 is going to trigger the NDX, it's going to put the NDX 100 into an all out bullish mode for its daily time frame. The Russell 2000 traded above its oscillator and changed up, but it's red, so it's not as strong as one that we took a look at in the Dow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We we're taking a look at the cash indices before we went into that break. Let me finish those off for you. Now, if we take a look at the semiconductors, so if the market's going to rally, the semiconductors need to join in. And right now, you can see that the semis are trading above the green oscillator and chains. Now, let me expand out the chart, see if we can figure out exactly where that is. Well, we'll just have to do it this way. So what you're looking for today is does the semiconductor index close above 56.12? 56.12.84, but the 84 cents is going to change, most certainly. Let's just call it 56.12. If price closed above 56.12, odds favor that we're going to go ahead and rally to try to take out that TD9 count top, and that's up at the 57.92.86 level. If price does not close above it, and so far, I would say that's just a counter trend move to the upside. And in fact, if it doesn't close above it, it could be setting up a new, uh, could be, I'm not saying it is, could be setting up a new C point of an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. That's not my call. My call right now is watch that uh, green oscillator and change level. And again, that number is 5612. That will give you an idea as to what its intent is, at least with regard to probably the next couple of days out there. If we look at the Dow Jones transports, what they've done today in their rally is they've actually triggered a TD9 count top. So that pattern is going to complete today inside the Dow Jones transports. What that suggests is that we should see a pullback to the oscillator and change line. That's at 15200. The Nasdaq composite, much like the NDX 100, a close above 18035 today will negate its roads meant to indicator top out there. It has triggered a wave number seven top, but that requires a lower high in order to confirm that pattern. You can see that first wave seven top went ahead. Let me get my cursor out here. That topped uh, the trading day of uh, May 28th. Uh, that was the uh, pattern that was out there that high. It wasn't a TD9 count. Uh, the TD9 count was negated the same day that that went ahead and formed a wave number seven. That led to a four-day uh, pullback out there. Then we just simply restart the count from there, and you can see that now today we've triggered that, that second 
wave number seven pattern out there. So you'd watch for a lower high uh, with regard to the NASDAQ composite. And the New York Stock Exchange, does it close today above 18.033, which is its oscillator and change line? If it does, then we're likely to continue to rally higher. Then we're likely to see also see the NYSE advanced client oscillator continue to move. And quite frankly, uh, you know, it could get an oversold condition in the next uh, couple of days out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the cash indices out here. Let's go ahead and start with a couple requests that have come in. Uh, not as many as I'd like, so uh, I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648, or you can go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. So the first one that we're going to take a look at is going to be the uh, uh, Newmont Mining. Uh, this is for Hector and Patty, and happy 4th of July to you, to you guys. And uh, Hector, absolutely, today is confirming a daily A to B equals CD pattern the upside. The B point of this, which is labeled C, part of the Chapman Wave tools on my screen, was June 24th. And the volume there was 7.2 million shares. We've only traded for two hours. Less than two hours, we're at 2.6 million shares. So yes, we're getting a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern the upside. Now, the initial price target would be 44.20. This retrace, tra we, we, we retracement, how about that? This retracement was about a 61.8% retracement out there. So this may just simply do the normal one-to-one -one move. We've got a nice wide-ranging bar. Uh, so, um, you know, that, what does that say? Well, that said, if we were at 44.20 uh, with this wide range of bar, that would absolutely not be the top out there. Markets typically do not end on wide ranging bars. But what we have to be paying attention to, Hector and Patty, as beautiful as that looks on the daily time frame, we have to be aware that the weekly time frame has a TD9 count top at 43.91. And above that, you've got resistance at 44.59. So we've got a price target of 44.20. I would say more likely than not, um, price will go ahead and target the uh, 44.59 level out there. But you've got resistance, and I'd say it's between 43.91 and 44.59. Now, if we get a close above 44.59, then what we could be looking at is a weekly A to B equals C pattern to the upside. We're not going to go ahead and type that in at this stage here. You're good enough. You can uh, figure that out for sure. Uh, but we're not there. Not until it takes it out do I really want to take a look at that. And then on that monthly chart, what we can see here is price is trading into its bearish uh, zone. Uh, it's a it's a, a sell zone out here because of its bearish structured monthly profile. So it's early in the month. The question is, does price take that out by closing about 43.18 at month's end? I don't know. We have to just keep our eye on the daily and the weekly time frame chart. The other thing that we need to do, is we need to take a look at how uh, Newmont Mining and gold, because we've got to really be paying attention to gold as well. You'll see that here momentarily when I put the correlation chart. Now, this is a three-day correlation I've got that compares Newmont Mining up at the top with a gold that's in the center, and then the bottom is showing what, is that, cor what that correlation is. Bars that are above zero tell us, tell us that we have a directional correlation. Directional correlation, meaning that um, uh, if price is moving up, uh, in gold, new mining is likely moving up. If it's moving down, new mining is likely moving down. So the reason why I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves is when we take a look at gold, what do we see out here with gold right now? I see a swing point high on May 20th. Then I see another swing point high on June 7th. That was a lower high. Then I see another swing point high, which was on June 21st at 42.95. A third lower high out there. Right now, although the day's not over, we're still in it, but potentially could be a fourth lower high out there. If price closed above 42.95, then that pattern obviously, you know, goes by the wayside. But we want to pay attention to that. Most certainly, be paying attention to what gold is doing, not just completely focus on Newmont Mining. So hope that helps you out. Happy Fourth of July to you, and as always thanks so much for your request let's go out to martinez california and speak with brent brent thanks so much for calling how are you today oh, i'm doing quite well steve and you excellent thanks so much for asking any uh crazy any any how any july 4th plans they don't have to be crazy uh but any july 4th plans oh i'm sure we'll go taking the fireworks at there's a pretty good place it's actually where i go do my hiking that gives you a good oh, vantage cool. point to see uh, multiple different, you know, shows, and it's probably the only negative is there's so much going on. You just have to try to pick one, and <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's a good place yeah. to look at it. Oh, that's cool. That sounds great. I'm going to walk out my front door and watch them too. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a which is a nice thing. So you want to take a look at CLF, I believe. Can you tell the folks uh, what you're doing and how I can best help you? Um, I have this one. There's one other one. Might have you look at it if you have sure. time. But I, this yeah. one, this one, I am in. 
I'm long. I bought in. It, you know, it's like 14 and change. I have the uh, September 15 dollar calls, and so I okay. just wanted to get your thoughts on it. It, it's signaling to you and I right now that it should go target on a daily basis, 17 bucks. And the reason I say that is because uh, price, you had a profile change in trend back on June 28th. And that profile, the top of that profile at 1534 was tested the following day, was tested yesterday. So the level of resistance has gone by the wayside. So the daily time frame chart says to you and I, it wants to go target its TD9 count breakdown level, and that would be $17 even Steven. The weekly chart completed a TD9 count bottom two weeks ago. Uh, a new profile formed last week. That new profile has supported 1467 and resistance at 1620. So now I would modify my price target to say, okay, 1620 to $17 is gain. If price, and it's, oh, you know, Brett, we're going to a break here. If you'd be kind enough to hold on through this break, we'll come back, we'll take a look at CLF. What's the second uh, request that you've got so I can get those charts queued up? It's a cassava, so S A V A. Perfect. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. 
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Before I go back out to uh, Brent out there, um, I, I was uh, looking at that correlation chart, and I had written down the high for Newmont Mining at 42.95. The gold number that you're going to want to watch is 23.82.60. If price uh, ticks above that, then we don't have a fourth lower high out there. Now let's go back to CLF with uh, Brent, and uh, so on the uh, on the weekly time frame, your next level of resistance up here is going to be 16.20. If price can close above 16.20, then that oscillator and change on is printing in the $17 area. And so a close above 1620 is going to be what signals to you and I it wants to get back to the 117 area, uh, the 17 area. The monthly chart is just a consolidation with inside its profile. I don't see anything else there. Uh, Brent, what additional information can I provide to you on CLF? That's really it for that one, Steve. I just wanted to get your thoughts. And I guess one other thing, do you consider would it have to be when it gapped up on, I guess, three days, three or four days ago, there's a gap to the left-hand side. Would it need to have gotten above that lower point on the, to be an a island reversal? Or how do, you, how do you consider that to be an you know, island reversal? So I don't, sure. So now that's a great question. Let me, let me open this up here and let's just expand it out. So what Brent is referring to is the gap to the downside. I believe this is what you're referring to, right? The do, Brent, uh, the uh, gap to the downside on June 11th, and then comparing that to this gap to the upside on June 28th. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the high on uh, June 11th out there, uh, that, that's the high of the gap down. You know, that's a tongue twist. That's not a tongue twister. It's a mind twister out there. Uh, but it's at 1528. And so then the question is, on the trading day three days ago, June 28th, did price get down to 1528? And it did. It got down to 1523. So I don't see that as an island out there because price touched that area. Um, just make sure. Yeah. So I don't see that as an island bottom. Does that make sense? That's what I thought was. What kind of determine that is more on the left hand side, that touch point there. If it stays above that, then yes. it's considered to be an island reversal. That, that's what I thought. I just wanted to get clarification. Perfect. And it would have been a nice island reversal, too. You know, typically you get, you see those are maybe one or two days. Um, when they're built up like that, that would have been one heck of a nice, uh, that would have been one heck of a nice bottom. Uh, pattern out there. It still looks good. Still looks bullish. I mean, I like the weekly chart. We like the daily time frame chart. And there's nothing wrong with the monthly. It's just been in a consolidation. And it tested, in essence, the buy zone uh, last month. We're still trading inside of that buy zone. And this would say, Brent, that if you could close on a monthly basis back above 1627, uh, then you're likely to continue moving higher. Of course, you know the drill. The asset and change will be the first level of resistance. And then after that would be the top of the profile of 2071. So let's go take a look at that next Quest of yours, which was um, uh, to Cassava Sciences. Now, what are you doing here? What information can I provide to you? I don't have any position yet. And I guess my uh, specific question would be on that day that it kind of took that plunge down. Sure, I think it was June 28th. Eight, yeah, eight, what, 897, whatever the level was. Eight, is yes. There something eight, in particular that is down there that would like it was just happening to stop there was there something down there that that you can identify that would make sense that it stopped there that's what was my question so I would have to say the answer to that question would be yes um, and and when I pull back the weekly time frame chart what we can see is that this thing broke out on the trading session of I'll just of uh, February 5th uh, 2021, um, that week, this thing broke out with 203 million shares. Uh, the day, the week before that was with uh, 24 million shares. So what price is doing, it's coming back to, in essence, to that breakout area out there. The question is, when you see a move like that, where is the real breakout? And the real breakout, I would say, at least what I was taught by OB1 out there, was the real breakout would, would more likely be the January 8th low out there and that low is at 678 and so the low that we saw on that week last week out there was um i think it was 670 or 879 out there so uh make sure i got the right low at uh low is 806 so you know it's, it's trading into that area that could that that's the only thing that i see 
um, immediately when I take a look at the charts. There's no pattern or anything along those lines. I went to the weekly chart. We can take a look at the monthly chart as well, see if there was anything out there. The monthly chart should, should have a pretty big volume. So, yeah, so it's really, you can see the breakout here is really down at this, um, let's just call it the low of January of 2021, and that low, again, at that 678 area. Now, what I would say is what price is more likely to do on a monthly chart in the buy area would be a 278. And 278 is the uh, TD9 count breakout level that formed here. Um, so that's a place to be looking. Are you, are you, you're not in the, I don't, did you say you were in this position, not in this position? No, I don't have anything yet, Steve. I'm just, again, trying to be patient and watching it. And, and uh, that's that really helpful. That's what I'm looking for some other levels potentially on the, you know, to the downside where I might try to pick it up. And that's what you've just provided. So. Yeah, you know, now, look, if you were to see a bullish reversal candle form on a daily time frame, that would then trigger a buy the D point pattern. So that's one thing to be also watching for. Now, that just might be a little bit of a counter trend move, you know, up to its oscillator and change line. You, you know, you never know at this stage here. Maybe there's new profiles that would form that would then, you know, add to the idea of maybe uh, tinkering with it to the long side um, on a weekly basis. So let's take a look at this. This had a, a swing point low on October the 13th, 2023. Volume there was 12 million shares. And that low was um, 1232. And the close last week was 12.35. But we're trading below that now. And so unless price closes back above that on Friday, you know, that swing area would have been, uh, would have failed. That might have been another area of support that I was noticing, not necessarily on volume, but at least a swing point level of support. So we're staying below that. I'm going to go with this really wants to probably head back to 278. Okay, well, thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate all your help. I hope you have a safe and, and happy fourth. I uh, will, and you do the same. to you very soon. That sounds great. Thanks so much for the call. That was Brent in Martinez, California. He's going to be looking at those beautiful fireworks all throughout San Francisco. Let's go to our next request out here. And this is from Nicholas, who's taking a Tesla. And certainly this is breaking out. Now, today is going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count on the daily time frame. You can clearly see the A to B equals CD pattern. We're well above a one to one level out there. So you don't need me to do that. Even if you look at the weekly chart, you can see that we're well above the one to one area. So what are you looking for? out here number one we don't have a three gap play or anything but you could get that maybe on friday this thing could gap up if that gap is a large is larger than the uh, gap that we have today between yesterday and today and then yesterday and the day before and it's got to be larger out there then you could have a three gap play setting up as bar number eight would form and as you know in a td9 count it's the high of bars eight nine or the bar following nine that could set up that high we come back from this break we'll finish take a look at tesla tesla then we'll go take a good rx rx then gl for run the silver futures contact contract the equity futures for run as well and anything else that i can get my hands on steve roach with tfnn we'll be right back spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So, Nicholas, Tesla... Um, what you want to watch here is it's already ticked a, uh, it's, uh, its most recent swing point on a weekly basis. That's the week of January 5th out there. That swing point had volume of 407 million shares. Uh, already today, for a weekly standpoint, we're at 467. Now, what you'd like to see this do is close on Friday above 247.43. That's the bottom of that swing point. If you trade inside a swing point with volume, odds favor you're going to go at least test the high. So the high, and this would be a price projection for Tesla would be up 265.13. What happens if price closes the week below 247.43? Then all that really suggests to you and I is that price is likely to get back up and test that 247.43 again. Monthly chart looks good. So everything here in Tesla looks pretty good to you. It is in a breakout mode, but watch that TD9 count pattern that could form between Friday and Tuesday of next week. Let's go out to Boulder, Colorado, I believe, and uh, speak with Roger. Uh, Roger, how are you today? Wonderful. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing great. Looking forward to the uh, little 4th of July celebration. I think the rain is going to maybe hold off a little bit here, so I'll get in some a little bit of golf out there. And how about you? How will you uh, celebrate the 4th of July? Wonderful. We're going to have some barbecuing and, and uh, gathering. Perfect. Um, That's perfect. That's great. Right. Beautiful. So, so, so um, yeah. the question, actually, um, it was one comment about um, our old um, friend, Dave White, Yes. A theory about um, when when oh. when stock ends with a whole number, and I just don't know about this. The like Amazon yesterday closed at the century level and a whole number, and uh, I know yesterday you went over Amazon. Yes, but, uh, I just wanted to make a comment on that. That is actually it's heading a little bit on the downside, but mostly I called for Marvell. Yes, and. Uh, Palo Alto. I'm just trying to see if I can get an exit point, at least for the Marvell. Okay. So here's what Marvell is doing on a daily time frame. Uh, it has poked its head into the sell zone. The sell zone is just simply a step. And I'm, when I'm referring to that, I'm not saying that's a sell. It's a sell zone where you're running into resistance, which is this has a daily bearish structured profile. So uh, profile levels that we take a look at, the bottom is exclusively where buyers are at. The top is ex exclusively where sellers are at. Then there's a center. And the center tells us where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value so the fair value so because and that's going to we're going to call that 50 50 so when that center is closer in proximity to the top than it is to the bottom then we have a bearish structured profile out there so we're inside a sell zone we're inside where sellers more sellers and buyers are lurking and that's between 7190 and 7360 but like any great defense you know they fail they can fail 
out there. So you're just inside a sell zone. You're asking me where's a potential level of resistance or a sell, not because of a pattern, just simply because of resistance would be 7360 on the daily time frame. Let me move from the daily to the weekly chart. And on a weekly time frame chart, we've been consolidating with inside its profile basically since its form, which was about four or five weeks ago. We're still doing the same thing. Unlike the daily file, which had a bear structured profile, the weekly has a bullish structured profile. And that tells us that because we are above the center of that at 6841, price should be able to push its way all the way up to the top. Well, the top isn't too much further from where we're trading right now, and that's at 7342. So the real resistance area that you have in Marvell is going to be between 7342 and 7360, and that's coming from the daily and the weekly chart. Now, before I look at anything else, do you have any questions about that? No, no. Actually, I was looking at uh, I was looking at the TD9, and um, it is on the fourth day, so we have another yes four or five days left. Potentially, you know, I, when it, when we get to days four, five, or six, even seven, it's kind of hard to tell if we're going to get that pattern or not. When we get to day eight, and it's the higher the low of the pattern, then that increases the odds of that. Um, you know, if we we talked about seventy three forty two and seventy three sixty, and on the monthly time frame chart, resistance at seventy three bucks. So you're really coming into a resistance zone, which you'd love to see price clear if you're along this instrument, because if that unfolds, then we're likely headed back towards the $78 area. But to answer your specific question, it's clear to both of us from the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, as far as my tools, that this $73 area is going to be your resistance zone. We'll call 73.60 being the top of that. If price closes above that, a Marvell should continue to run higher. Uh, Roger, is there anything else that I can uh, do for you? No, actually, I was looking at the other one question, request was the Palo Alto Network. Uh, it's starting uh, to fill that gap that had a uh, big drop, but it was um, uh, Crowd Strike was downgraded. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be the sympathy. Um, it may have some resistance to go upward. So let's add the, the charger. The chart, sure. So the charts are pulling up on my screen. So in this case here, uh, just you had mentioned the TD9 counts, and that actually formed a TD9 count bottom. That com it confirmed the pattern on June 3rd out there. Bar number eight was low of the pattern. It's been in, in here. You can see uh, just not with regard to the TD9 counts. On June 13th, you had bar number seven. On June 14th, you had bar number eight, and on June 17th, you had bar number nine. But that was not a TD9 count top, and the reason is because the high of that pattern came in on bar number seven. We can see how the resistance point here in Palo Alto Networks on the daily time frame, the TD9. So even though it wasn't a top or bottom, it still sets up these TD9 counts. Set They set up level breakout levels of support, breakdown levels of support. When that TD9 count to the downside formed on May 31st, that set up that resistance level. And it looks like at 222.11. So we're well above that. What has been triggered, though, is a roads momentum indicator signal that just says caution. It just says if you go outside, take an umbrella, and it says you'll see thunderstorms if we were going to see a bearish reversal candle. So we don't have that there, and this is suggesting to me because price above profile, price above a green oscillator and change line, that it should rally further. Now, that rally further might just simply be to the high of June 28th, which had volume of 4.1 million shares. Today, you're trading up with 500,000 shares. That's to be expected, you know, on a, a July 3rd out there uh, but uh, so it looks to me like it wants to move higher that's being uh, communicated to you and I by the weekly time frame chart we had a profile change in trend last week we're above pop, top of profile above a screen oscillator and change line that's bullish and that's the same condition on the monthly chart so the monthly chart suggests let's see what we did last month well we're inside the monthly swing point, and that's likely where price is gunning for. And that swing point uh, was on February of 2024, and the volume there was 191 million shares, 60 million shares last uh, last month. But still, for me, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but it does. It's not the. It's not like uh, it's telling us we're gonna. It's gonna be Debbie Downer or headed to to the to the downside. Why? Because price took out resistance where the sellers were at at 326.94, and price is above the green oscillator and change line. So we have a rising price oscillator above zero bullish conditions. So the first place to be watching for is going to be the high, I think, of June 28th. And if price can go above that, we continue to move higher, and we could even see price get up to the top of that February swing point and that's up at 380.84 so if you're in Palo Alto Networks I don't have any reason to suggest that you would sell correct I got it cool thank you so much 
Thank hey, you, you so bet. much. Uh, you have a wonderful 4th of July with the family and everybody else. I will. And you do the same. And I look forward to your next call. That was Roger in Boulder, Colorado. He's going to be cooler, I'm pretty sure, than Stevie is. Uh, when we get back to this break here, we've got some requests out there. I'll try to cycle through those as fast as I can. And uh, we'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, Recursion Pharmaceuticals, which has uh, got a nice big A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It's waiting for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a potential bottom pattern out there. Last week, um, we can see that price uh, was tested on a weekly basis, a swing point out there. That swing point was from the week of April 19th. And that swing point had only volume of 19 million shares. Last week, we were trading down with 67 million shares. This week, we have tested that swing point as well. Now, obviously, we've got a holiday shortened trading period. Uh, so, you know, we got 16 million shares so far. Looks like volume is typically around, I don't know, what is it around typically? It looks like we're just simply going to test that and reject that on lighter volume. So... What you'd really like to see here, Dan, is you'd like to see a close back above the uh, bottom of that weekly profile to suggest that this was a false breakdown. And that level out there is 766. If we don't close above that, 
then I'm kind of undecided as to what its real intent is. If it wants to head lower, support would be about 522 to 605 out there. So the daily time frame, look for a bullish reversal candle. The weekly is testing the swing point on lighter volume, kind of extrapolate out because of the holiday, you know, what that actually is, and maybe that would assist you. Let's take a look at GL. This is for Ron inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at GL, Ron, on a daily time frame. All we really have is a consolidation with inside its profile. That's between the range of 7707 and 8344 with 8383 being TD9 count breakdown resistance out there. I don't really see much else other than that, other than a consolidation. The weekly uh, is a consolidation with inside its profile as well. If price were to give up and close below 8127 or thereabouts, that would suggest we might be seeing lower price on a monthly chart. Man, I don't know how to read this. Although, well, I do know how to read it. Uh, well, this is kind of interesting. Take a look at the power of that uh, breakout, that TD9 count breakout at 69.47. So that was tested with one of the widest ranging monthly bars I think I've seen in a long time. So at least support is held. We take a look at GL. So hope that helps you out, Ron. If we take a quick peek at the uh, silver futures out here. Uh, what are they telling us? Uh, right now, you'd love to see it close above 3076. If you get that, we could see a move up towards the 3167 area out there. Weekly looks pretty good. And then lastly, we'll end the show here with the equity futures. Equity futures, a close above on the ES Mini, it closed above 55.85, and we're off to the races to the upside. In the case of the NQ, it's a 22.71 and a quarter. Folks, have a have a, a fabulous Fourth of July. We'll see you on Friday. Take care.